Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as you can tell, welcome. This is the Year's Panic Today program for December the 6th. As you, as you can tell, we're very festive today. I told Chloe I had a bad hair day, <laughs> but it's awfully cold out there, so I put my it little is. cap on. And uh, Chloe, I want to thank you for bringing our tablecloth and, oh, and the flowers. She really knows how to put the, the touches on uh, on decorating here. Uh, Again, this is your Hispanic Today program. And in uh, finding out what we were going to talk about this week on the show, uh, just by like a little miracle, I had been thinking about Chloe, and then she called me, and I said, this is what I want to talk about, because this is the festive season when, when we're all thinking about Christmas and the people that we love. And I think we also need to, to think about the people that are near and dear to us and that possibly we can help. So when Chloe called, I said, that was the call to talk about uh, Ramsey Muniz. And then also, when I went on my Facebook, I saw uh, a message from Ramsey, and I said, it's all coming together. And I think uh, during this holiday season, it's very important that we uh, reach out to the people that need us the most. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, a letter that I received on Facebook from Ramsey. It's named, A Beautiful Christmas Story from Imprisonment. On the radio, they are playing Christmas carol songs, and different spiritual individuals are making messages about how this Christmas is going to be very special, like no other Christmas before. I believe that, because I know it feels what it feels to be chained, shackled, and naked, naked during Christmas Day for these three straight years. I never complain to anyone in this so-called free world, because I do not wish for anyone to feel sorry for me. Instead, I was seeking love, compassion, faith, and spirituality, thinking that if they decided to come forward to seek freedom and justice in this case of cruel and unusual punishment, they could come forward, and they did. Yes, I have much to celebrate, because it's the day of my beloved brother, Jesus Christ, who came into my mode of oppressive darkness as I was getting ready to give up on my life, for I was not eating anymore, and I was beginning to get ill like never before. I was even thinking about the fact that maybe it was time for me to die. And as I was on my knees, crying, sobbing, not knowing what to do anymore, with all these chains and shackles on my naked body, and I was on my knees, crying, my most beloved brother, Jesus Christ, came and said to me, Rise, my brother, and be strong, and let the world know that, man, that the man that we, you are are destined to be and to come from the time of your birth. Let the world know that you are destined in this world to being free, justice, and love to the masses of humanity on earth and all the spirits who are in heaven will forever be by your side. I rose from my knees and began crying, singing and even dancing, and all the chains and sack shackles on my body of, 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 of excuse me, of my body. Within two days, prison officials came and removed the chains and shackles, making comments that it was too elated, that I was too elated and happy to be even in solitary confinement. Within a few weeks, I was finally released from solitary confinement. Yes, I will celebrate this Christmas day like never before, because I have never felt so strong in spirituality. So this was a letter that was written by Ramsey during this time, during Christmas time. And, you know, I don't know, uh, we have featured stories before about Ramsey. He's been incarcerated for now, what, 20 years or so? 21 years. 21 years. And uh, we'll go into a little bit more on possibly how the viewers can help him and, and the story about Ramsey. Uh, now I want to read uh, the, the letter that was sent by his wife, Irma. And in reading this letter, uh, Sky, if you could kind of put their picture up on the screen, I think would be, uh, uh, be a good idea. Dearest husband, this is a beautiful account that speaks of suffering, sadness, desperation, faith, strength, courage, and miracles. All of these things have been a part of your life. I thank God for giving you the strength to survive what most would not. Yours was a suffering that cannot be compared to others because of the conditions and length of time. It brings about sentiments of great sadness. I love the strength about you, and we owe that strength to God. His son, Jesus Christ, La Virgen de Guadalupe, Salvador, Hilda, Rosa, Benita, and many others that we do not see or hear. Their spirits are with you, and they are united in love. We honor Jesus Christ for making his way into the depths that nobody knew, saw, or heard, only 
he was able to penetrate the concrete to save you, and he did. I will always thank God for your life and for who you, we are together. There was a great purpose in, our, in your suffering and even a greater purpose for your survivor. With all my love, Irma. So this is uh, a story coming from Ramsey himself and his beloved wife, Irma. And then we're going to go into um, some of the happenings and updates of Ramsey Muniz and uh, my friend Chloe here next to me. Uh, can you give us an update? Uh, I guess you shared with me about three day, three weeks ago, Ramsey had sent you a letter. Yes, mm -hmm. he had. He uh, wrote to me and he, he was asking that he wants to encourage people to keep their faith okay. and to remember that prayer is the strongest medicine. And um, if he hasn't given up, mm -hmm. You know, his faith, you know, considering all the suffering, that for us to, to please keep him in, in our prayers and to even in our churches, if they can talk to the clergy there. Mm -hmm. um, if you're Catholic, you can talk to the priest and the nuns and see if we can take it even further. And, and uh, if you go on freeramsey.com, we'll get more information as we will now be communicating to the Vatican, to the Pope. Okay. Uh, in my correspondence, I believe his wife also corresponds. Uh, she sent me an email, I guess it was back in October, and she was talking about um, Ramsey's lawyer, uh, Dick DeGaron. Yes. And that, uh, and I think I had reported a little bit back then also, and there's Dick DeGaron's uh, attorney at law in Houston, Texas. And Dick has... Uh, submitted an application for compassionate release for Ramsey. And what they were requesting is for people to write on behalf of Ramsey and to send that letter to Mr. Dick DeGaron in Houston, Texas, in order to, um, to, to get those letters comprised in order to work on the case of possibly getting Ramsey out of jail. Is right. that right? Yes, we believe that this is, this is uh, um, really the most critical time we've We've had Ramsey in, uh, in prison for so long, and um, he's not getting any better there. And uh, Dick DeGaron has uh, promised to uh, take take us, uh, help us in court. But he does need these letters of character, of of support uh, uh, for release for Ramsey. Mm -hmm. I believe also uh, a number of months ago I gave a report from the U.S. Uh, uh, Attorney General Holderman, I believe that's his name. Holder. Holder. Mm -hmm. and, and Holder was basically talking about because of the, there's so many men incarcerated at this time, and, and Ramsey, uh, and, and, and of all the people that are incarcerated, there's some people that could possibly be, uh, be released under a compassionate release system. And uh, Ramsey's uh, into his 70s now. He, he uses a, a cane, and, and he's not in best of health. Is that no, right? No, he's, he's, in fact, he's really unable to walk most of the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, this would be a way that, or this is a way that uh, Ramsey and his wife are, or, and asking the support of the community to come together and uh, see if, if we could write letters of, re, of uh, support. Yes, for him. yeah, and it's interesting because uh, even in prison, he's helping a lot of the, the young mm -hmm. uh, people in there. And it, it's, it's the most terrible thing to have him um, in prison in that facility that is uh, really uh, for gang-related Mm -hmm. inmates and uh, yeah. you know Ramsey merits his release mm -hmm. so what we can do as individual if we go ahead and uh, show that uh, address again is to write uh, Dick DeGaron uh, attorney at law 1018 Preston 7th floor Houston Texas 77002 and as I said doc, uh, Mr. DeGaron has uh, submitted an application for compassionate release mm -hmm. for Ramsey Muniz and so your letters need to be uh, sent to that address, and hopefully we will uh, have some more movement on this because yes. uh, it's definitely time um, yes. for Ramsey to, to, to see freedom again. And uh, as we're all aware of right now and in the news, uh, Nelson Mandela has just passed away. Yes. And um, you had some, some correspondence there, or you wanted to share a letter that you wrote about the similarities uh, between... Um, uh, Nelson Mandela and Ramsey and there there are so many similarities 
between these two men. Um, the only difference being geographics. Okay. And that's all that there is because we're all brothers and sisters of the planet. Uh, Nelson Mandela was also a lawyer. Okay. And Ramsey is a lawyer. And, you know, uh, Mandela. And they're very political. I mean, oh, uh, uh, extremely. And the same doctrines that they had, the same applies, okay? Uh, what what is really interesting um, now with Mandela's passing is, you know, what's come forth is they're saying that Mandela actually did have heartfelt resentment, you know, but he never let anybody know when he came out because it still wouldn't have been appropriate to the oppressor, okay. you know, to know the real feelings that Mandela had, but. And so, well, you know, I uh, was watching the news, and and Clinton was on on there talking about his interaction with Mandela, and he made reference to that because to be in prison for 27 years, you have to have quite a bit of resentment for those that have put you there, especially if you feel or you were unjustly in prison. And so Clinton asked him, you know, when he came out, he was there to meet him or saw saw him mm -hmm. afterwards, and he said. You know, how do you feel? How do you feel against those people that have put you here? You know, do you have resentment towards mm -hmm. him? And that Mandela said that for a moment, yes, he did. But that if he allowed himself to be experiencing or having this hate and this resentment towards those people, then those people that oppressed him and had locked him up would still own him because he wouldn't have been a free man. Right. And That's now true. he is a free man. And, and now he really is a free man, and he goes into the light of it all now in the spirit world. Both men very spiritual too. Um, and I don't want to get past that. So, you know, forgiving those that hurt us. Okay. You know, both both of these men feel the same way too. Their work was interrupted with their family life. Okay. You know, and their children today still talk about, you know, how that really um, affected them and they missed their father but thank God they had other family members mm -hmm. and it's always the mother that has been so there for the children and that that is with our culture too as with uh, African culture so there's a lot of a lot of similarities and well if you think along the line of politics of course we all know Mandela was for freedom of the people apartheid and mm -hmm. and getting uh, the free I was talking to my dad and we were watching the news yesterday about Mandela wanting freedom and independence for the black majority people against the minority white in North Africa. And you think along the same lines of uh, Ramsey. Well, Ramsey uh, started La Raza Unida Party, which was basically a minority Mexican-American uh, getting together and just basically wanting to go to restaurants, wanting to ha be part of the political system, running, wanting to be office holders, wanting their rights to go to college to go to college to do what what everybody else was doing so you know I think I mean I didn't know Ramsey back then but I heard of him and and I think his his uh, starting of the Rasa Unida the party and even you know uh, going a little bit further by running for mayor by running for the governor oh, yeah. twice and I think that was going against the status quo that was going against Absolutely. a lot of people that that said well you know uh, some people, some minorities need to be where they need to be and not, not elevate themselves. So he threatened. He threatened the status quo and the way things and, were. And he changed, he changed all of Texas politics. You know, if he had that valor, he had the courage, and he would, that determination. And that determination I knew, too, from being a little girl because when he went to school with my brother, they had their dreams. They had their visions. This was in Corpus in Christi. In Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. you know. So, and doing the comparisons of these two men, it was just unbelievable. Like I said, the only difference being geographic. So, the United States of America, we have our Mandela, and the United States of America needs to be educated. And that's why these um, um, school textbooks, they need to be changed, too to include who we are as Mexican-Americans, our contributions, like Ramsey Muniz made. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now, they still don't know who Mandela 
is. I mean, how can you not? They, and they really don't know about Ramsey Muniz. And so there will be more time that we will educate our children. But in the course of all of this, Ramsey Muniz went to Baylor University, and I think he was only one of five Mexican Americans that attended Baylor at that time, mm -hmm. received a full scholarship. Let me, I'm going to try and find where I have that, um, Peggy, but, but that, is, that is the truth uh, of his determination and, and to make it a better world for all of us. So it wasn't just about our role as Mexican Americans and our oppression and the signs that they had in South Africa too, where they'd say non-Europeans uh, non not welcomed, mm -hmm. you know, uh, no dogs, you know, comparing us to animals. I'm a dog lover. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time not being yeah. able to go somewhere. Well, they and would not say my dog. No, no Mexicans, no dogs yeah. allowed. You know, just that special that discrimination. And, and you know, and I, of course, they were both for uh, the freedom and liberty for individuals, and and desegregation. You know, not having, you know, the the racism that was going right. on. Even well, you say was going on. The racism is still around. I have experienced racism in the very very recent and mm -hmm. I had a lady with me that I'm teaching her English and she was my witness mm -hmm. and we could not believe and she goes then keep working for what you're doing she says mm -hmm. and so you know that's what um, I do keep going. Did you want to uh, read some of that uh, from there or from your brother's letter? Or well you know let's do, if you can kind of uh, catch some phrases there of what you wrote about uh, Ramsey because that was part of your presentation that you wanted. Yes to. Um, Feel free. All, 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 you know, th these precious words that came from Mandela are the precious words that I have known also from Ramsey and always with Ramsey, including the spirituality and looking at it at a realm of where he has been for him to not lose his faith. And I can tell you, uh, I have seen a miracle this past year. You know, I shared with you mm -hmm. that my son had three tumors, and he came to me and he says, Mama, you've been so spiritual. You know, I know your heart. God knows your heart, Mama. Mm -hmm. We prayed. My son went to go see a doctor. He was going to have to have surgery. All of a sudden, I call him a few days later. I said, Mijo, my son, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? You know, when is this surgery? He goes, Mom, you're not going to believe this. Mom, they're gone. Wow. And so mm -hmm. I'm not trying to offend anyone if you don't believe in the spirituality, but it is, this is an example of mm -hmm. the strength that we have, that we behold, and that we need to celebrate it. And then mm -hmm. this is the time of the season, you know, that if you have love to share, then we need that love, we need that compassion. You know, put it out for Ramsey. And, you, and when Mandela came out, look, he went from African political prisoner to being the president of Africa. Ramsey Muniz can still come out and help us do more work also. Okay. And, and he is not a threat to anyone. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want people to know that. Now, Ramsey Muniz and my brother went to high school together. Okay. My brother went to Texas A&I in Kingsville. Ramsey went to Baylor. Okay, with that being said, um, I want to read this when my brother passed away. Now, my brother passed he, away just recently, He right? passed away seven weeks ago. Seven weeks. Okay, he was a three-star brigadier general, my brother. And uh, his name was? Juan Francisco Herrera. Okay. And so, um, Ramsey uh, wrote this, my beloved brother, John Herrera, you always took care of me and protected me from anyone and everyone. He was strong and very powerful physically, but would always seek my presence because I would always advise him to be calm and be respected. One had to have that first in one's heart and soul. He would pick me up for school during his senior year. I was a junior then. He bought a car during the summer since we both worked together on a construction crew with all older men. We were the old young Mexicanos on that crew, but we could handle it. We played football together for two years, and we were the best, for no one could ever get past Johnny or me without getting hit so hard that they refused to come around again. Coach Regas 
is a witness to the so-called wrecking crew of Johnny Herrera, Ramsey Muniz, and Bobby Muniz. We were tough and proud. We also took pride in our studies, and I would like, uh, and I would take him to tutor in certain subjects because it was his desire to attend college. My brother mm -hmm. was the first college graduate in our family. He got a scholarship to A and I with my brother Sammy Garza. Both Sammy, Johnny, and I would never miss a game when I was a senior at Miller High School. After each game, they would come to the dressing room and embrace me and share with me that I was the best. Like always, and I was the first Mexicano ever to receive a four-year full scholarship to play football at Baylor. The rest is history. I know Johnny Herrera will be with me soon and that he will come from heaven to once more. Oh once more I'm sorry take care of me because with God we win okay that is that was part of what he he said but I thought it was very interesting too to say that actually he was only one of ten Mexican Americans in the entire university Ramsey Muniz mm -hmm. that says a lot that says a lot yeah you know, and mm -hmm. let's see, you know, education, sports, doing positive events for youth and our bodios, and making sure that we would be examples of leaders for others to follow our steps, not only in the field of athletics, but most important in the classroom, you know, for life. My son too, Ben, he's a coach. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he does. He mentors the, the youth and I mean, we, if we thought we had work to do then, we have more work mm -hmm. to do now with the modern world the mm -hmm. way it is. You know, where kids forget, you know, yeah. it's not just about mm -hmm. having fun and designer clothes, yes, el otro, you mm -hmm. know, this and that. But, so you see, I have been influenced by Ramsey Muniz, and then I influenced my son, and then it'll go like that, mm -hmm. you know, and... and well, I see from so your letters what, what this basically says is that when Ramsey was young and growing up, and growing up with your brother and stuff, you know, you you lived in Corpus and y'all all interacted, and and he was just a a great citizen. And and yes. and what we want to do now is just his he's had the unfortunateness of being uh, in prison now, and uh, you shared to me also that uh, you're in communication with Irma, his wife. Is that right? Yes. And uh, when you spoke with her, uh, I guess today or, or yesterday or so. Uh, what was what was she saying that was needed in order to help with Ramsey's cause? I have to tell the audience, Edma is asking that we say our prayers for a miracle. Okay. For Ramsey to be released, for his health, you know, for us to celebrate God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, to know that 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 is what people forget mm -hmm. sometimes you know yeah. we're, I I'll, think I'm not one mm -hmm. to forget if no. you know me you know uh, that I think I think what our conversation is basically you know we we have tried to to present you today you know a letter from Ramsey a letter from Irma uh, communication with Chloe and her experience of of her brother and growing up with Ramsey how he was part of her family and we here at, you know, of course, this is my opinion and Chloe, and we've kind of become very good friends because of, of Ramsey and, and the plight of Ramsey. And uh, Sky, if you could show us one more time, I think as an audience, maybe we would be probably be requesting just a letter of support uh, for Ramsey uh, and let, you know, Irma and the attorneys take care of what needs to happen in order to get Ramsey when you but I think what we're requesting is, you know, letters of, and, and a prayer for, yeah. for Ramsey. And, and, you know, we, we were good children from Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I just shared with you, my brother went on and became a three-star brigadier uh, general, general and mm -hmm. we lost him. And when I heard from Ramsey, considering the suffering that Ramsey has been in, mm -hmm. that he could come forth mm -hmm. and help me in this difficult time mm -hmm. because I was a small one and I would go to the classes with my brother because I was the mm -hmm. youngest one yeah. you know Johnny died at 73 but what happened with Ramsey too and all of us is we were raised with a lot of spirituality and trust and 
Ramsey unfortunately trusted some people mm -hmm. that he didn't even know and and so you know the consequences have um, imprisoned him but I also want people to know that during this course that I've been involved with free Ramsey with freeing him is that people actually communicated with me I don't know if I ever told you but a woman actually came to my house and told me that she had been part of a very bad plan against Ramsey to mm. put him away for life and that she was dying of cancer and she wanted mm -hmm. me to forgive her. Oh, who am I to yeah. forgive her? But that's a reality. That's yeah. a true story. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we'll be reaching out quite a bit. <coughs> <coughs> I just want to um, invite the viewers to please go to uh, freeramsey.com. You can go on YouTube slash Ramsey Muniz and find out some information there. And we'll get back with you. Of course, there is on the uh, on the uh, doll there, freeramsey.com. You get more information and correspondence. And of course, Ramsey would always like a letter of um, from the individuals about you know during his stay, because that I'm sure that would bring up his spirit. Before we go, I want to uh, read a poem that I've received on Facebook from Tomas Barker, and this is a poem that uh, kept M Nelson Mandela going through going through his 27 years in prison. He died yesterday at the age of 95. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the, if, in the fell clenches of circumstances, I have not winched a, a, or cried aloud. Under the bludgeon of chance, my heart is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the honor of the shade, and yet the menaces of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how stra straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scrolls. I am master of my fate. I am captain of my soul, and captain of my soul. And this was uh, written by William Ernest Henley. And also, mm -hmm. I received on Facebook just today a letter from Ransom and Nice on the loss of Nelson Mandela. I am greatly saddened with about the passing of Nelson Mandela. But at the same time, I see him embracing my beloved brother, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for freedom, justice, and love for the world. Even as I share these words of spiritual wisdom, I cannot st stop tears of sadness or sorrow, because at the moment that I heard of his passing, I was reading his book, making comments about his thoughts, which made an impact on my heart. He spoke with the same voice, knowing the true meaning of oppression, discrimination, racial bias, loneliness, chains, shackles, and long imprisonment. Those who continue to feel the cold iron and steel doors that shut their hearts and minds can understand. I will be with my brother Nelson Mandela as I will pray for his journey to heaven. I ask that after his resting and taking his spiritual position that he come into my heart and soul and give me the courage, pride, love, heart, and soul to become a free man once again and to bring freedom to the masses of humanity. To Nelson Mandela I say, I will always love you for coming into my life. I was in solitary confinement. My wife Irma Muniz sent me your most famous book, Long Walk to Freedom. I read the book twice and I shall always love you for being the man, father, and spiritual human being that you shall be forever, forever be. I have fasted and drinking only water for the last four days. I shall continue to fast in dedication to the spiritual life to my beloved freedom brother, Nelson Mandela. Freedom, freedom, God, give us our freedom. Uh, I personally am very concerned for Ramsey, and I asked uh, on behalf of Ramsey and his family for your prayers. I, it very worries me that he's been fasting on drinking water. And when I read that, I, I thought of uh, Cesar Chavez, who would also put himself through fasting. And I, I don't know if Ramsey can hear me, but I ask you to pray for him and, um, and, and help him, help him to regain his freedom. Before we leave, Chloe, did you want to say something? Yes, um, I want to um, ask Ramsey Muniz, through his wife and through the prison, to stop this uh, fast. Um, your health is compromised, and we love you and we need you. And 
we know your spirituality and your love for God. For Nelson Mandela, we all loved mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela. But please, Ramsey, stop that um, fast. We'll get you out soon, brother. <laughs>